Now, I've been determined to do one thing in 2017, and that is to hashtag make wrestling fun again. But if there was a second thing that I'm really trying to come back, or I'm really trying to do, is to fight against stupidity when it comes to professional wrestling. And that could come from all different areas in all different facets. And it's part of the reason why I'm doing this Wrestling with Stupidity video series, because there are just things about professional wrestling, things said about professional wrestling, things done in professional wrestling, that I just think are incredibly ridiculously dumb and stupid and need to be spoken about. Now, in this particular case, this is more about me. Sometimes my favorite topic, right? And some of the criticism that I've gotten over the past six plus years of doing this on YouTube. And one of the most common complaints that I'll get, one of the most fundamental criticisms that there will be about me, is that I'm just a muscle mark and an indie hater. I am an indie hating muscle mark. And I guess here's my thing. Number one is I don't mind if I'm criticized. I think it's fair game. I don't like if people just flat out agree with me. But here's my thing. I think the criticism should be fair. And the criticism should come from an educated not but her viewpoint. And whereas it is completely fair to criticize me about things about being too negative about wrestling in general today, although I ask you why the fuck would I be positive, uh, if you sat there and say, well, what is it that would actually make you happy? And then there's a fair criticism sometimes. And there are other fair criticisms too. My high voice, my twitchy eye, so many other things. You know, the fact that I do this solo now as opposed to the rest of the old Off the Rope Show OTR Central crew and it's not the same because you're right. You know, those are fair criticisms. And have a way at them. We can bicker back and forth about them, but at the end of the day, they're fair. But this is one that's always kind of irked me a little bit because I don't feel it's very fair. In fact, I think it completely and totally misses the mark. It's just like completely way off. And no matter how much I try to combat it in like tweets or YouTube comments, it just keeps creeping up. So I decided this time in Wrestling with Stupidity that I was going to take on the people that say I'm an indie-hating muscle mark. Because this shit needs to be said. Now, maybe part of this comes from the fact that I've said in the past that size does matter in professional wrestling, uh, because it does. You know, there is some type of correlation between the decreasing size of the performers and the decreasing size of the wrestling audience today. It takes a blind man and a fucking fool not to see that. Now, granted, that doesn't tell the entire story, and me just solely saying it is size alone would be my version of hashtag alternative facts. Part of the thing in the past with guys being bigger is that since they couldn't do some of the crazy bumps and shit that people do now, because frankly they didn't need to, they focused on making the things that they did do matter. There was a greater emphasis on storytelling. There was a greater emphasis on character development and each person being their own unique individual character. There was also a greater emphasis on being able to deliver on the microphone and being able to captivate people with the power of your voice. So what that happened with the size and sometimes the lack of ability to truly go in the ring, you compensated for in other ways. And frankly, I think made him a more well-rounded and interesting performer. But there is a correlation between the decreasing of size in the wrestlers of today and the decrease in the audience. And again, it takes a fool and a blind man not to see that. It is not the be-all, end-all. It is not the only problem. It is not the biggest problem. But it is one of them, and I stand behind that because it is true. Now, maybe some of you sit there and get mad because over the years, like when it came to CM Punk, I was never exactly glowing in my praise of CM Punk. And in particular, with the Summer of Punk in 2011, I was one of those early critics talking about how stupid this whole shit was. How they rushed the boat on this crap, how they screwed the pooch. And how it was ridiculous that this guy that had the chance to be this big, huge fucking deal, they kept having job out. And lo and behold, what do you know? History proved me to be right. And when he leaves, you know, saying goodbye, fuck him, good riddance, I stand by that. 
not sitting there and praising him because, oh, he had such courage to take an ass kicking. The motherfucker got paid half a million to take a two minute ass kicking. I used to take longer ass kickings from bullies that were much bigger than me, way above my weight class in grade school and middle school in particular, and didn't get paid shit for it. In fact, whatever little lunch money I fucking had, they took it from me. They beat it out of me. So don't sit there and tell me about his fucking courage. Fuck you. Maybe it's because of the fact that I've said things about Daniel Bryan and I wasn't always glowingly effusive in praise at any and all times. Because when he first came to the WWE, I didn't see what the big deal was. And I didn't see how WWE was ever going to figure it out. And frankly, they did a lot of dumb shit with him in the first two years outside of the program with The Miz and things here and there. But it was funny, you know, when I talked about the fact that they needed to back off of him and rework things and he needed to go an Owen Hart type of approach. When he did go an Owen Hart type of approach, you got Team Helmo, which I thought was great. Now you've got a whole different type of Daniel Bryan. And this guy developed into a great performer. But I still sat there and said I wouldn't build WrestleMania 30 around him. And sure, a lot of you love what happened at the end of WrestleMania 30. And it's your great glorious thing that you fucking hold on to. But three plus years later or so, he is the fucking commissioner of SmackDown or general manager or whatever the fuck he is. Because he can't wrestle anymore. So I stand by what I said about I wouldn't build WrestleMania 30 around that fucking dude. I didn't shit on him consistently. It's just the way it was. Maybe it's because you don't like the fact that I refer to so many guys as flavorless spot monkeys because that's exactly what the fuck they are. I even had somebody I am me at work today talking about some of the people who watched Illumination Chamber with. We're talking about uh, the in-ring performers are the best they ever have been. And I told him he could tell his friends to go suck a fatty because they're fucking stupid. Anybody could go out there and flip, kick, and bump their way into fooling people to thinking that shit is any good, but you do all this crap with no meaning and no consequence, you devalue the action that you do have, and you're taking more bumps, taking more risk for less money. So no, I'm not going to sit there and advocate that type of professional wrestling because that's not what professional wrestling should be. You can have that as a part of an element, but it should not be the lion's share of the picture. And that's exactly what it is. Maybe it's because I don't like New Japan. You know what? J Japanese wrestling is just not my fucking flavor. I don't care for it. But I also don't go out of my way to watch it and then crap on it. That's what I do with the WWE. But just because I don't love New Japan, you know, you Japan heads, you could fucking have New Japan. Suck a donkey on it for all I care. But that doesn't make me an indie hating muscle mark either. Now, granted, granted, Back when I was growing up as a kid. Now, mind you, again, as a kid in the 80s, an entirely different era of wrestling, I grant you. I was big on guys like Hulk Hogan and the Macho Man Randy Savage and the Ultimate Warrior and Jake the Snake and the Junkyard Dog and Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, the Road Warriors, and many others. But let's not forget that I was also a huge fan of the Rockers, and I don't think we'll ever accuse them of being frickin' roid heads. They weren't giants, you know, they just did every vice under the sun, including steroids, but they weren't big, fucked up, jacked up dudes. The British Bulldogs were a couple of guys on fucking gas, but that's not why I liked them. I liked them because I thought they were an incredible tag team and they had fucking Matilda the Bulldog. Imagine that, they're called the British Bulldogs and they come out to the ring with a fucking bulldog. Coco Beware was another dude on gas, but he wasn't a freaking giant. Mr. Perfect was just Mr. Perfect and he wasn't a fucking giant. And there are other guys too. Not everybody had to be a freaking giant. And even as we went into the 90s, got into the Monday Night Wars, the Attitude Era from a WWF standpoint, sure, I was a huge fan of The Rock and, to a lesser degree, Stone Cold, and a huge fan of The Undertaker, a huge fan of original Kane. You know, the Kane that didn't talk, that just came out and fire shot out, and he was fucking awesome. But I was also really big into Mick Foley and Owen Hart and Chris Jericho and Kurt Angle and Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit. And even as Guerrero and Benoit were gassing themselves up to death, they still weren't freaking monsters. I won't. I don't think anybody would ever classify Kurt Angle or Chris Jericho as a freaking monster. And if you say, just based off of some of the things I say about Chris Jericho now, it doesn't mean that I wasn't a fan of him then. Do you remember the original Off the Rope show setup? One of the posters I had in the background was who? You had what? Austin? Rock? Foley? And who was the other guy? It was fucking Jericho. Foley was a big dude, but he was kind of like sloppy big, and I was a fan of him because he was a character. He was multiple characters, multiple personalities, and the dude could fucking deliver on the microphone like nobody's business. 
But the tag teams too, the Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian, the New Age Outlaws, Too Cool, that's just to name a few. You know, sure, I like the APA, but the APA was badass. They just happened to be bigger dudes. But they were just badass in general. The Hardy Boys weren't monsters. Edge and Christian weren't monsters. The New Age Outlaws weren't monsters. Too Cool, they most certainly weren't monsters. You know, and then you look at some of the individual mid-card, undercard guys. The Rikishis of the world, the Godfathers, Val Venus, Crash Holly. I fucking loved Crash Holly. I mean, he was a freaking super heavyweight, weighing in allegedly a well over 400 pounds. When he came down to the ring with that fucking scale, to me, that meant something special was going to fucking happen. Now, to me, if you put Crash Holly in today's WWE, he's as big a star as any fucking body. Because unlike most of the fucks in the company today and in the business in general, he was an actual talent, Lord rest his soul. But I don't see, just based off of my history, where you can solely say that I'm an indie hating muscle mark. Especially the muscle mark part, because I don't think that's particularly fair. Because I liked more guys that weren't big, huge, 6'6", 300 pound plus dudes than I actually did. And furthermore, if I was such a muscle mark for even what today's WWE, why am I not a bigger proponent of Roman Reigns? Now, maybe sometimes I'll, I'll say things about how the criticism I think is ridiculous and I'll stand behind that, but I don't think you sit there and hear me go out of my way to a few sprays on Roman Reigns. I just point out some inconsistencies and in some of the things people say. Braun Strowman, if anything, should be my fucking number one love of all time. I don't want to see my fucking roided up uncle Udo in the fucking WWE. I wouldn't say that shit about him if I actually enjoyed the performer or thought he merited the spot that he fucking has. Brock Lesnar, I'm the muscle mark. Now, mind you, I'm the muscle mark. But so many of you fuck sticks are the ones that sit there and defend his two-move having ass, and I'm the one that shits on him, but I'm the muscle mark. You don't see me say great, overwhelmingly positive things about Baron Corbin or Big Cass, or to a lesser degree, guys like John Cena and Randy Orton. Even the things I say about John Cena and Randy Orton you know, that's more so from a Breakfast Club show content standpoint as much as anything else. What, because I don't like guys like Dolph Ziggler and Sami Zayn and Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, TJ Perkins, just to name a few? Well, Dolph Ziggler's had umpteen dozen fucking opportunities. He does all this suspect-ass sissy shit. His stupid flopping in the fucking ring is not appealing. He's never become his own unique character. In fact, the one time I actually enjoyed Dolph Ziggler was when he used to go up to people and shake his hands and say, Hi, I'm Dolph Ziggler. Anything else is imitation act, wearing middle school, girl twisties in his hair, guy liner, gay ass pants. Oh, fuck Dolph Ziggler. And he's had the opportunity after opportunity after so many years, and he hasn't made anything fucking of it. So I'd rather see somebody else get that opportunity. Sami Zayn, give me a fucking break. The dude is boring as brakes. There's a reason we refer to him as an Uber driver. Because he's fucking lame. He's just fucking lame. If anything, the El Generico gimmick during his time in the independent scene and in ROH and so on was perfect for him because he didn't have to fucking talk because he can't fucking talk. And El Generico is a perfect name for him because he's as generic and vanilla as any fucking buddy. Finn Balor, once you get past the awesome face paint and the spectacular entrance, that's it. He's just another dude. Seth Rollins, as a babyface, is god-fucking-awful. If Roman Reigns is awful as a babyface, oh, because he is, because of what WWE has done with him, Seth Rollins is equally every bit as terrible and god-awful as a fucking babyface. Thanks, WWE, for that one, too. And let's not even get into Dean Ambrose and the fact that that he's regressed, not progressed, or even stagnated as a performer over the past three plus years. I mean, the dude's ring work is fucking lazy. His promos are fucking overrated. He looks like he needs to wash his ass. And at some point in time, he has to reach that moment in life where he has to determine, is that fucking sloppy looking comb forward really fucking worth it anymore? And then TJ Perkins. Do I really need to say anything more? The epitome of boring spot fucks in professional wrestling today. But just because I don't like those guys doesn't make me an indie hating muscle mark. I mean, if you want to say there are criticisms or there is something that you could label me as, you could say I'm a cuck for the black wrestlers. That's fair. Because I'm a fan of like 
Mark Henry. And who shouldn't be a fan of Mark Henry? And if you're not, fuck you. Big E, Xavier Woods, Kofi Kingston, Apollo Crews, Titus O'Neil. You know, I happen to like those guys. Fine. But I don't think it's fair to sit there and call me an indie-hating muscle mark because when you look at some of the other people that I happen to enjoy or think are good or happen to be a fan of, I look at the cruiserweight division. And I've said my negative things about Raw having a cruiserweight division, how stupid it was of an idea, because it was stupid because you see what the fuck has happened as a result. But it doesn't change the fact that one of my favorite performers in the business today period is the Brian Kender, because unlike most of the fucks big or small in the business today, he actually knows what the fuck he's doing. Like I sit there and watch him on Raw, he can get a reaction out of a fucking handshake, and he doesn't have to flip or kick to get legitimate heel heat on himself. That is a lost art, and he can actually do that. To me, I feel like I'm watching somebody take us to school every time he's on TV, every time he's in the ring. And he's all of, what, 170 pounds? He's worked all over the world? But I, I'm an indie hating muscle mark, right? I'm, I'm a fan of Neville. I sat there and said Neville should be the face of the cruiserweight division. Granted, as a baby face, not a heel. But you don't see me coming on here saying a lot of crap about Neville. Jack Gallagher, there's just something redeeming about a man with the handlebar mustache and the freaking umbrella that he has the courage to open indoors. And you look at the other roster, you know, sure, Rusev, I have a great appreciation for Rusev, and it only continues to grow even when the WWE puts him in stupid situations. Because if they actually let him go, people could finally see just how talented this dude is. You know, but Cesaro, I mean, this is a dude that worked on the independent scene for years. I used to love the Kings of Wrestling. Until Chris Hero became a hero sandwich. But Cesaro, I've always been a Cesaro dude. That's pretty consistent. Even Kevin Owens, I'll say shit about how he's a pussy blocking people on Twitter like me. But I'll also talk about how he looks like shit because he does. And he needs to hit the gym and so on. But I haven't never said I don't think that he isn't a talented dude. You know, he was he was the guy that back in 2010 gave me the one thing that a fucking Sami Zayn was ever involved in that I thought was any fucking good and was because of Kevin Steen. Even though if I don't like what the company does with him, it doesn't mean I still don't like the performer. The Miz is not a fucking giant. AJ Styles most certainly isn't a fucking giant. Samoa Joe is kind of a big portly dude, but I wouldn't exactly fit him into the type of muscle mark type of category. Enzo Amore, if anything... You could sit there and say, for some of these dudes, is that I'm a fan of guys that try to be characters and personalities because God knows in today's professional wrestling business, we fucking need them. But to sit there and say, for some of you, for six plus fucking years, that I'm just some indie hating muscle mark, you're just stupid. All these names that I mentioned, I'm not just making this shit up. And if you've watched over the years, you would know that these are some of the people I like. Or some of you might sit there and say, well, you're a fan of Psycho Sid. Well, if you don't like Psycho Sid, then fuck you too. The man gave his leg for professional wrestling entertainment. He at least deserves your admiration and respect. Scott Steiner is fucking blown up with gas to kingdom fucking come. But just let him teach you one math lesson. Just one. How could you not like the eminent train wreck possibilities of a Psycho Sid and or Scott Steiner especially on the microphone? I think it's ridiculous because to me at the end of the day, wrestling should be a variety show. Wrestling should be something that could potentially have something for everybody. Not everything will appeal to everyone. And there's going to be some that won't appeal to most everyone. But at the end of the day, to me, it's best when you've got some dudes that are big, some dudes that are small, some dudes that are funny, some dudes that are serious, some dudes that are great over-the-top personalities, and some dudes that are just kind of there. You need all of that. The problem with today's wrestling is the people that look like me, that are shaped like me 15 years ago, weren't athletic enough to get involved in any other fucking sports, didn't have the personality and the other shit to be a true superstar in wrestling, so they infiltrated professional wrestling and slowly but surely worked their way up through the ranks until we get to the point now where it becomes about all the spots and the flips and the kicks and all the other shit that really truly doesn't draw the big money that even in today's world professional wrestling still could. So call me an indie-hating muscle mark all you want. 
is just not true. It's just stupid. And to me, to me, it makes you look stupid. Call me too negative. Fine. I am a cuck for the black man. Fine. Call me a sexist or a this or a that. Fine. Whatever. I don't give a fuck whether it's true or not. It doesn't matter. But this, this is just the epitome of YouTube wrestling bullshit and stupidity. It is. It's like because Hogan and Taker are my two favorite wrestlers of all time. That every single dude I've ever liked had to be six foot four, two hundred eighty pounds or larger, and that's just fundamentally untrue and completely and totally ridiculous. Now, surely in an ideal world, I would hope this video would illuminate some of you and stop some of that shit, but it'll probably only ratchet it up and make it worse. So, who gives a fuck? Have at it, you stupid idiots.